Hello everybody, this is Andrew Roboto here, and today I would like to do part 3 of the 2005 Red Sox yearbook review. And I figured I'd do it since I don't really have any other videos I want to make, and I decided to make this, so that's why I want to make this one. So anyways, um, I also figured I'd do this because I, I haven't done a review on this yearbook in two months. Because the last two months I didn't, I couldn't get part 3 uploaded because one, I didn't have time to record it and then upload it. And two, I haven't really had the motivation to do this because this is such a long yearbook. Because it's 2005, obviously. So yeah, so this will be part three of the 2005 Red Sox yearbook review. And I'll try, I'll, I have more Red Sox yearbooks I want to review and I'll try to do more of them. If, I'll do more, I'm trying to think of what to say, sorry, I'll do... I'll upload these as often as I can. It just depends on how long the yearbook is. Depending on how long it is, that's how long it'll take. Like this one, for example. So, I do apologize if it takes forever to upload. But anyways, on to where we left off, which is Game 3 of the World Series. The section is a red tag day. So, the Red Sox won Game 3, 4-1. to one. Manny hit a solo homer in the first inning before... Pegging Walker at the plate in the bottom of the frame. And after strong throw from Ortiz, Martin Muller thwarted a Cardinals third inning rally by tagging out Supin, returning to third base. And Martinez is all but hittable, setting down the final 14 batters he faced. Description right here. And then game four, of course, was the historic moment. Faith kept and fulfill. Red Sox shot out the Cardinals 3 0. And in this one, Damon hit a homer to lead off the game. All the support the Red Sox would need. Nixon provided breathing room with a two-run RBI double in the third. Lowell was masterful, allowing only three hits over seven shutout innings. And Folk recorded the final three outs for hoisting Veritek. And on the final play, Keith Folk threw out Edgar Renteria at first place, at first it's not first place, first base, sorry. And of course, the Red Sox, as everyone knows, the Red Sox got their first title in 2004 since in 86 years. From that, from that moment on, it's on to Boston. It's on to the Boston Duck Pope Parade. Which in 2004, Boston got to celebrate two Duck Pope Parades. Because Red Sox won the World Series, Patriots won the Super Bowl. And as you can see right here, which this is funny, <laughs> Jeter's playing golf today. This day is better. <laughs> which is hell, which this poster is held by Manny Ramirez. <laughs> That's funny. On Saturday, October 30th, 2004, the concept of, vict of a victory parade was forever redefined as a 3.2 million faithful citizens of Red Sox Nation, the largest ever crowd together in Boston, lined the land for three miles and the shores for more to welcome and celebrate. Home their heroes, the Rolling Rally. Rolling, rocking, splashing, slissing, splashing. Now, as you can see, is a picture of them boarding the duck boats. Got some pictures from the parade, so I'll show them. And this is an interesting description. Bleacher Creatures, the first duck boat to emerge from Fenway Park onto the close to traffic lands down land. It was the last calm before the storm of the, of the day's activity. Got some fans over here celebrating. Of course, in this picture, Trot Nixon got on his duck boat PA system, expressed his thanks as the party heads inboard on its first fork of the road. And of course, there's the man right there, Theo Epstein. Then we got Kurt Schilling, Mike Timlin, 
Orlando Cabrera, which he would also win a World Series, which he would win, which Orlando Cabrera would win another World Series with the White Sox the next year in 2005. Then we got Manny Ramirez, Kevin Nucleus, Doug Mankiewski. And then there's Jason Mirabelli next to Veritek. Or Doug Mirabelli, sorry. I, I meant to say Doug Mirabelli, not Jason Mirabelli. He's next to Jason Veritek, though. Oops, sorry. I almost, almost dropped my camera for a second. Then we got Terry Francona. With Mike D and Theo Epstein. Terry, manager for life. I like that picture. It's a really good picture, but sadly, though, Terry Francona could not be our manager for life because after 2011, him and him and Theo Epstein both got fired because the Red Sox collapsed and missed the playoffs. Terry Francona is now a manager for the Guardians. He's a manager. I don't know if Terry... And then Theo Epstein went to the Cubs. I don't know if he's still there. It's Pokey Reese and Dave Roberts. Stolen moments, Pokey Reese caught a few faithful on his camera while nobody, of course, caught Dave Roberts. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Born in 1918, always I always believe. And they got Keith Folk, Allen Embry, and Bronze on Arroyo. And in the rear, they waved off the ghosts of 1918 and the other seasons past. Because after the Red Sox got rid of Babe Ruth in 1920, they, after he was traded to the Yankees, they were unable to win a World Series for 86 years. Got Mark Bellhorn, Dave McCarty, and Johnny Damon. And then who else is here? Then we have Ellis Burks and Kevin Euclid, Kurt Schilling, Pedro Martinez, Derek Lowe. And then we have hundreds and hundreds of Red Sox fans shown in this picture. And of course, Jason Veritek was was a switch hitter and was ready to demonstrate he could be both ambidextrous and ambibious. Little wonder why he was later named the team captain. Apparently in this picture this is funny. With every inch of water front space I by one fan tried to walk on the water. Hey, leave that trick to Johnny. <laughs> Apparently some fan tried to walk on the water. And we got a bunch of fans over here. And this massive hysteria. From Cruz to first. And then we got the bullpen duo, Ramiro Mendoza and Curtis Leskanek, which, sorry if I pronounced that name wrong. Spreading the world champion spear on and off the field. And then this is the Red Sox's charity organization. Just kidding around. This one's right from the start. Just kidding around. 